Hey guys, it's Aaron. Uh, so during a recent live model, a thing came up that I thought would be worth diving into a little bit deeper. This is the concept of using straight materials to fill in the colors on uh, a model versus using imported imagery. There's pluses and minuses to both, and I thought it'd be a good thing to take a look at, which we will do right now. Okay, so I have two dishwasher models here. Um, the one on the right, I've already colored with default materials. I'm sorry, with uh, uh, installed materials. So these are just materials that come with SketchUp. There's nothing fancy or anything like that. Uh, if I pull over my colors here, uh, here on the back portion, most of this back here is just a dark, dark gray. This is one of the things we talked about during our most recent live model too is I prefer when possible to use a dark gray like a 90 or 80 percent gray rather than black because what this will do is when I have lights and shadows turned on it'll be a little bit lighter and I can still see my black line and if I turn it to full black then I'll kind of lose it it'll become a kind of a mass of black so using a dark dark gray is a tip that I would highly recommend just to, to keep your models a little more workable, a little more uh, easier to identify where pieces are on there. The rest of it, this, this front portion, is all stainless steel in the real product. So I actually use the default material. So the, uh, the steel, it's, it's here if I look at my materials and go to metal. This one right here with the lines. I did, once I painted it on the front, I did use the texture position command to scale it up a little bit. So I just wanted it to look shiny a little bit. It, it's initially, it's, it's a little much. It's, it's like this and it, it looks almost striped. So I tend to pull this one out a little bit bigger. So I want to get like, you know, one piece of shine here against the darker grays, just to indicate that this is a shiny material. That's all I did with this. So in, in here, the controls, uh, these are actually modeled. So I have a little, little button here that does have these uh, seven buttons across here, and then there's a little display, and then another button. So they're all actually modeled, and you can see I put a little bit of relief in there. That way, if I do look at the monochrome view or something like that, I can still make out the details, as opposed to just putting squares. But this is the kind of thing you have to do, too, if you want to use materials. So obviously, if I hadn't put this in, and I just put the same metal finish over there, it would just look like a blank panel like the side does. I would lose the detail of this right here. Okay, so this piece on the left, I want to attempt to get to the same look as this piece, but I want to use images imported instead. And we're just look at where that, so this, this is not a, here's the way you should do it. This is the best way. This is kind of a, there's pluses and minuses to both. So what I'm going to do is talk about a couple pieces. So first piece is this back section. I actually don't know what the back looks like because it's not in any product photos because it goes underneath the countertop into the cabinets and you don't ever see it. So I just colored it, like I said, this dark gray. Now, when it comes to putting in solid materials, I will always, 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 always recommend using just standard colors. So come into your colors and then however, depending on the operating system, it's different, uh, but going and picking just a straight color from here versus going and importing an image of a color. I've seen some people who did this where they import these images, and the issue that comes up is an imported image, no matter how small it is, is still a heavier thing to have than just picking color and dropping it on. Um, I've seen models where people have 4K images of concrete floor put on that tripled the size of their model just to have concrete floor where they could have dropped in a gray and gotten the exact same result so i mean seriously this 4k image looked like this so i highly recommend whenever possible just use stock colors if that's if this is good enough to get the job done then do it there's no reason to to import an image for this so that's the first thing all right so that part is that now we have a couple pieces we want to bring in. I want to bring in, I have an image of this straight on like this, this front. So we're going to pull that in. I have a separate image of the actual control panel. So I'm going to go ahead and bring one of those in. Um, I'll start with the control panel. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to choose 
This image I got from the manufacturer website. I am going to come down here and say I want to use this as a texture and I'm going to import it. I'm going to place this on the, the surface it's going to go on, but I'm not going to worry too much about exact size or anything like that. So I'm just going to drag it out like that and click it. Now I'm going to go to select, right click on the surface, texture and position texture. So something you'll note is that I am working with just raw geometry. Nothing is grouped, nothing's nested right now, and that is intentional. That makes this much easier to deal with. So if you get to the point where you have stuff grouped and grouped and grouped and grouped, that's awesome. That's what you should build, but you have to get down to the actual texture or to the actual materials before you try to go in and apply materials like this, apply pictures like this. All right, so I kind of moved it over. What I want to do is I want to actually, so you can see right here, this is the break. It looks like that's the front door. So the door, the panel on the front, <laughs> the front door. Um, so I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to blow it up a little more. This is one of the things you're going to run into and you're going to have to think about as you start doing this kind of geometry. Um, the image that I built off, the, the DWG file I built off of is slightly different geometry than what is actually in this image. That, that is to say the scale of the two is different. So this panel right here that I have goes from here all the way up to here, but in the image, the panel is much narrower. So right away, I have to make a decision here what I'm going to do. So I could come in and change my geometry to match the image. I could hop out to a photo editor and edit this image, or I can do a little bit of distortion right now. So I'm gonna to choose to distort my image just slightly and see how that works. So right now I have these colored pins. I'm gonna right click on one and turn off fixed pins. Now what I can do is I can actually click and grab these and I can position them in the image where I want them. And then I can use that to actually stretch out the image. So I can pull this one down like this, pull this one down like this, and there we go. So obviously there's a little bit of distortion there, but you can see what that did was it gave me all that, plus the logo and a more realistic screen right there, than maybe my buttons over here. So depending on my goal, what am I trying to get out of this? This might actually be a good solution. So going along with that, obviously, I need something coming down the sides. So in a situation like this, there's a couple things I could do. One is I could go into my colors. I could pick this color and fill it down the side and see if that looks close enough. Yeah, see, that, that doesn't look bad. That looks pretty good. The other option would be to clip out a piece of this like right here where it's, where it's clear, I could actually clip that and make it a repeating pattern. The danger of that, of course, is it's, this obviously isn't made to repeat, so I might get like an odd pattern. In this case, the color works well enough. All right, let's get the front on here. I have a separate image for that, so I'm gonna go to File, Import Again. And I'm gonna grab my second image and still use a texture. I'm gonna import it. And I'm just going to drop it here on the front. Same thing. I'm not going to worry about filling up the whole thing. I'm just going to kind of drag it out like that. Okay. Now, some of you probably already caught up with what the issue here is going to be. Uh, I'm going to go same thing, texture, position. This one, actually, I might be able to, if I right click and toggle fix pins, I may actually just be able to scale this guy up and have it line up pretty well. Yeah. See that actually. I'm gonna click out and see how that looks. That's pretty close. Oh, a little bit, little bit bigger. I'm just shy on the right side. So I'm gonna texture, position again, and I'll pull that out. Little teeny tiny bit like that. All right, there we go. All right, so that looks pretty good, right? If I look at it straight on like this, I got the logo right here. That's nice. I don't have that. I don't have that over here. I have a little logo here. Um, the shine looks good. It does give that definitely a better stainless steel look than over here even. The downside is what's going on here. So you could look at it as a plus in that I got a shadow 
baked into the the image the downside is i have a picture of the handle <laughs> so that might not be exactly what i'm looking for there um, this is the potential issue with doing this style so to to actually use images you have to have geometry everything that aligns perfectly or you have to be willing to go into something like a photo editor and clean this up so in this case that would mean opening this in a photo editor maybe copying this material using a healing brush or something like that to get rid of where this handle is because uh, it's sitting on the outside that's that's a little rough what we might be able to do i don't know how this is going to turn out but uh let's give it a shot i'm gonna select this texture i'm gonna make it a projected texture and then i'm gonna sample it and apply it here that turned out pretty cool that turned out nice so you can see my geometry is not aligning perfectly so again i got the same thing i had up here where uh, maybe my dwg was out of date from what uh, the actual image that got or the the product that got created i don't know i don't know what causes those things but uh, for whatever reason i did not uh, have everything line up perfectly but it's good enough that that looks i mean that looks that looks pretty good in my opinion and so your call in this case do i want to is it worth going in to get rid of this geometry uh is it worth you know resizing to clean this up that's kind of your call but you can see the difference there and the amount of work how much work did it take to put these buttons in versus slap this on here and is the depth here worth it versus what i'm getting out of the picture that's kind of your call i'm not here to say one's better than the other i'm just here to give you options so i hope that's clear i mean and, and i know and I'm, I'm sorry there's not an absolute i can't come in and say always do this because there's no always there's it depends it depends on a lot of things like the quality of your image these are not super high quality images they're a little blurry uh, but at the same time you don't want to pull in monstrous photos that are going to bloat the size of your model so that's a fine line to walk to but the big thing is what is this going to be used for if this is a dishwasher that's sitting off in the corner of a render and it's going to go through a rendering engine and it's going to get reflections applied anyhow then you probably just put materials on it in the render don't worry about it if it's just a screenshot an image that's you know going to go on here's what your customer here's what your kitchen's going to look like then you probably don't have to go with photorealistic if it's supposed to represent an exact product then you might want to go for something like that so if somebody wants to see their exact refrigerator in there you might want to take the shot from the manufacturer's website and put it on the box for them to see this is the refrigerator you're asking for so a couple of options for you there if you like this video go ahead and click like down below and if you haven't already please subscribe we create several videos every single week around here and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe most importantly though please leave us a comment most if not all of our content is created from comments from viewers like you we like making these videos a lot we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see thank you